Today is Monday the 15th of March and I thought it was about time I got back on here. It's been about, gosh, 18 months to two years since I recorded a video and I have lots to share and talk about and I'm hoping to come back to you at this stage every single week because I'm embarking on a challenge. For all of those of you who know me, <laughs> excuse me, I'm getting tongue tied because I haven't done this for a long time. For all of you who know me, I've battled a weight problem all my life and it's starting to take its toll on my joints, on my breathing, my asthma and just life in general. So I've decided that as I'm now 60, although that's another story, <laughs> um, it's time to do something about it. So I am going to embark on a challenge, but before I tell you about the challenge, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the delightful Andrea and Andrew Doig from Fruity Knitting. Those of you in the knitting world will know that they're having a really tough time at the moment. Um, I think it was about 18 months ago, Andrew gave up his full-time job to work on the Fruity Knitting channel with Andrea. They produce the best quality podcast, I think, that's out there. The, the knitting that Andrea does is just superb. They are so inspiring. I have really started to make things out of my comfort zone since I became an avid Fruity Knitting fan. Um, I would never have made my um, Catherine Howard top. I'll just get that to show you because I have finished that since the last time I was on here. I would never have attempted anything like this if it hadn't been for watching Andrew and Andrea. And just look at this, it's beautiful. And the back, look at that at the back. I don't know if you can see it terribly well. And the sleeves. Now, at this stage it doesn't fit me, but I'm hoping that by winter it will. Mm -hmm. um, so I have nothing but praise for Andrew and Andrea. The, the quality of their podcast is superb. Andrew is so good at all the technical stuff that it's worthy of anything that you would see a professional production team on the TV produce. So um, I think it was around September, October last year Andrew was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumour and since then he has suffered a lot and they are more than anything suffering financially because they don't have any other income except for what their fruity knitting channel generates um, and the patron Patreon support that they get. At the moment Andrew is receiving treatment at a clinic, um, not sure where but I know it's in Germany somewhere because that's where they live, in Germany. Um, and I, I think he's getting top-notch help there for, his, for this tumour. Uh, Andrea is staying there with him as support, but as you can imagine, the cost of something like this is very expensive. I have no idea what the health insurance um, system is like in Germany, but I know that here in Australia, even if you might be covered for some of it, you would still have to put an enormous amount of it out of your own pocket. So, I've decided it's time to cherish my health, look after my health, treat this body like a temple, and do something for Andrew and Andrea. So I'm going to set myself a challenge to lose 10 kilograms in 10 weeks. And I'm going to ask all you lovely people out there if you could make a donation to Andrew and Andrea. I'm going to put a link here across the bottom of the screen and I'm going to leave that link up throughout this whole podcast. And every week when I come back and report my progress to you, I'm going to keep that link up there so that feel free at any time you can make a donation, whether it be, you know, $1 to $100, whatever you're comfortable with, just to help them out during this really difficult time. I have spoken to Andrea about this and she is more than happy for me to do this and any photos I put up of the two of them I have permission to do so. Okay so I'm going to starting from today I'm doing a healthy eating plan I'll be up front and tell you that I'm going to basically follow the Weight Watchers or WW as it's called now plan and I'm also going to be introducing 
some exercise, um, very gentle exercise to start with because of my crook knees. Um, I'm really hoping that, I mean, I've got to lose a lot more than 10 kilos, but this is just my start. And I'm hoping that after this is done, I'll be motivated to keep going and that I will hopefully reduce the need to end up having surgery done on my knees. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, film a few things during the week that are relative to this quest and um, I shall be back on Monday next week with an update and I'm going to actually be very brave and post my weight up on this video but I won't be doing it till the end. So um, stay tuned every week, watch through to the end to see my progress. But in the meantime I have been doing some knitting. Uh, my main project I'm working on at the moment, just bear with me while I stop knocking all this off my table, is a Fair Isle blanket. Now this is designed by the wonderful Marie Wallen and this was her Fair Isle Club number one blanket. Now you cannot purchase this anymore at this stage. There is talk that she may release the pattern one day in the future but I don't know if she's going to do that or not. Um, I have made one of these before um, and it was four years ago when my dad got very ill and passed away and it's a series of squ 12 squares which you then sew together and knit a border around the edge and when my dad got very sick and I had to um, hop foot it off on a plane over to Tasmania um, I was working on I had almost finished this blank and I was working on square number 11 and funnily enough I'm up to square number 11 now on the second time through and this is it and this was actually my favorite square when I knitted the blanket before perhaps because of the memories associated with it but also it, it sort of um, doesn't have the small repeats like all the other squares have so it's quite a long as you can see this is quite a long pattern repeat on this um, square and, and here, you've got from here to here. So it's not one that you can really memorize, uh, but I love it. And if anyone likes to see the back, this is the back. So it's, it's quite neat, I'm quite happy. These have all been um, weaved in as I've sewn, as I've knitted, sorry. So they've just got to be snipped off. I will still have some ends to sew in. Oh. Right, I'm sorry about that. That was my daughter just arrived. Um, she had a little doctor's appointment and the doctor's just up the road from us so she called in for a cup of tea. So we've been having a lovely little sit and chat outside and I thought I'd better get back to this and I have no idea what I was up to or saying. So so this is square 11 um, but I just thought I'd show you the other ones I've done. There's this one. I love the colours in this. They remind me of coolness and winter and we have had a very long hot summer here in Perth and um, even today, <laughs> halfway through March, it's still going to be in the 30s today. It's also been very humid, so it hasn't been very pleasant at all. So anything that makes me feel cool is a good thing. Um, here's some of the other squares that I've actually started sewing together. This is actually going to be a gift for someone. So um, I had... I had quite a lot of scraps left from the first one I made and also one that I made a similar one for my daughter um, so I thought rather than the scraps just sitting there I'll make another one and I think all up I've only had to buy half a dozen extra balls of wool and it's made by the way with Rowan uh, felted tweed and then I've also sewn these ones together this is a whole strip that's actually finished so you sew it, sew up three strips with four squares each and then you sew the, the strips together and then you pick up the stitches around the edge to do the border. So it's starting to look, can't see what I'm doing, yeah it's starting to look really good. This Rowan felted tweed knits up absolutely, oh it's just beautiful yarn to work with. Oh and there's some more up here. As I've been finishing them I've just been um, pinning little 
uh, number tag so I know which square is which for when I sew them together. This is the other one of the other strips I've started to sew together. That's a beautiful one. So that's getting there. I don't know how long it will take. I'm sort of prioritizing this project at the moment. Um, I should have square 11 finished I reckon in two or three more days and then I'll have a break for a few days and work on some other things and then um, I'll do the last square and then I'll have another little break and then it will be all full steam ahead picking up the stitches and doing the border. Just a little note too with colour work knitting I know most people do it using both hands I just can't get into the swing of that I still knit the old-fashioned way, I knit the English way and I hold both strands sort of in one hand but I tend to keep the main background colour to the right and then the, the, um, the less dominant colour to the left and I sort of hold that down with a finger while I'm working with, that, um, the, with the background colour and I just sort of drop and pick up and drop and pick up and going to try and get myself a tripod so that then I can film properly um, how I do it. Uh, so yeah, I think if you're a sort of person that can't get to come to grips with using both hands, don't stress. No way is the right way. The right way to do it is whatever way works for you. So that's how I do it and it might take a lot longer than some people but I, to be quite honest, if it takes me a bit longer it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long it takes to knit something. I love the whole process. I love that it's slow fashion. I just love everything about it. So yeah, if you can't do it with two hands, don't worry about it. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is a beautiful scarf I'm making and it's called the Raffia Scarf and it's by Alastair Post Quinn who was featured on one of the Fruity Knitting episodes a while back. Now this is double knitting. So for those of you who are not sure, when you're doing colour work, you have this side is the right side and you have this side is the wrong side. If you're doing colour work that's uh, double in double knitting, you have this side is the right side and look at this, it's so beautiful. But when you turn it round, you have another right side. So you're sort of knitting the back and the front all on the same row. If you look closely, you'll see there's like pairs of stitches so there's a pair there a pair there and each pair the first stitch is the side that you've got facing you and the second stitch is the side that's away from you it took a little bit of getting used to I must be honest but once I got the hang of it um, it's quite easy now you just got to concentrate a little so uh, I can do this quite easily while I'm watching TV but not if I need to read subtitles. So just be warned, you do need to concentrate a bit. But it has this lovely edge because you slip a stitch every uh, row. It has a lovely edge down the side. And I'm using um, uh, one of the hobby yarns for this, or Hobie, I'm not quite sure you pronounce it. And I think it's Danish. And it's the Dolce Cashmere yarn. Um, not quite sure of doesn't actually have colours written on it, it's just numbers, but they they are like an ombre, ombre um, effect. They sort of fade from a, a dark colour through to a light colour. So I'm using the two different colours I'm using. I'm using these lovely bamboo needles from um, One More Row in Perth sells these. They're Japanese and they're really lovely. So this is the uh, lilac-y pinky colour. And I'm uh, still in this quite dark section. I'm interested to see how it, um, the light's not terribly good in here, but it will go then to a, a light paler lilac, then to a more pinky, then almost like a, a greyish white with a pink tinge. And then the other colour, I had to wind this into a, a ball because it all came apart. Um, so I'm still in quite the dark section, but this you can just see if I pull that apart, it's going to start paling up as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how the two colours play against each other uh, the further along I get. I'm going to put all the details with the links to the patterns in the notes down at the bottom so that you'll be able to have a look. Uh, it's a bit lumpy bumpy at the moment but when it's all washed, uh, when it's all finished I'll be able to wash it and block it out 
and it will I don't want to stretch it out too much because I'm on a straight needle but yeah that'll all stretch out and it will have this lovely wavy edge um, my daughter my eldest daughter has got her eye on this and she loves it so she may end up getting this as a gift <laughs> unless I change my mind <laughs> And the other thing I've been working on is another Alice Starmore design. And Alice Starmore designed my lovely um, Catherine Howard jacket that I showed you. So the other one I'm making is called the Damsel Fly. And this is using some techniques I've never done before. I've had to do quite a lot of modifications for this because I'm very wide around the hips and a lot smaller up here. So, um, and because I'm a large girl, I've picked the largest size, but when I measured myself, even the largest size wasn't going to be enough for the bottom edge. The design of this cardigan is, um, it, it buttons at the top, just to under the bust line, and then it, it just uh, drapes out. So you don't actually have to fasten that bit, but I still wanted to have plenty of room in it. So what I did was, um, for like the bust section I did the large size and then I looked at the difference in the sizing in between the sizing um, for this edge down here and it was say just for example each size had was a difference of five stitches so what I did was I measured to what I thought I would need worked out how many extra inches of fabric I'd need and I think it might have been two inches so um, however many stitches per inch I added it might have been like an extra 15 stitches which would be three sizes larger and just I just graded everything to that and then worked my way back down to to the large size in the pattern so so this section here is two or three sizes larger than the larger size in the pattern and then I just decreased a bit more often than it said to so that I got to the correct number of stitches at this point for the large size and then this bit up here um, this is the other thing I've never done before so this is going to be a jacket but this is going so you can keep knitting it in the round I've put in some steaking stitches when, um, when I finish the sleeves this is going to get cut and sewn down the same for the armholes here and there's also another small one I think in the centre back just a very small one so I'm really interested to, really looking forward to doing this because I've never done it before and look at the back oh, I just love these colors Alice Starmore wow what a genius oh, I've got to be honest I better check it could have been Jade that designed it I'm not a hundred percent sure um, but you can find all these designs on virtual yarns and I'll put a link in the notes below it's just beautiful it's been folded up in my bag so it will need to be washed and stretched out a bit her colors are just gorgeous you can get this in a kit from her website um, and I think she's got three different colorways in it and this was the latest colorway she added for this pattern this is the red damselfly and I just love it I've got some nice buttons somewhere too that I'm going to use on the front um, I'll try and have those out for next time so that's the main body of it and then here's one of the sleeves now I still think the sleeves are going to be a bit tight I haven't finished this sleeve yet um, so hopefully by winter I'll get some arm exercises in hope to reduce a little bit of this and then hopefully it will fit and this is the other sleeve which is finished so I haven't actually got a lot left to do when I finish this square I'm working on on my blanket I'm going to then do the sleeve cap on the other sleeve um, so then once I finish the blanket all I really have left to do on this is to cut the steak sew the edges down and then pick up the stitches to do the bands so most of the hard work is done <laughs> so that's it for all my knitting and this has been a little bit all over the place I'm sorry with the interruption and with the nerves kicking in because I haven't done this for a long time I have lots of projects a couple of other projects on the go um, I'll just show you quickly I've been doing the, the COVID 
19 blanket by Arnie and, Arnie and Carlos. This is just some of the squares I've got done. But I've put this a bit on the back burner now because um, I want to finish my Marie Wallen blanket. So I'm not going to touch this now until I've finished that one. But there's lots of lovely squares. Um, I have started sewing some of them together, but I won't get them now. I'll wait till I start doing more work on it to show you. I'm also working on a Jennifer Wood design at the moment, and another lovely jacket. Um, and um, but I'm not. I've put that away now until I finish my Alice Starmer one. So I hope you're all well. Uh, we haven't been away very often because of COVID. We've sold our caravan. We're upgrading to one that's got its own bathroom facilities in it. And we should be able to take delivery of that in about two months time. So we're hoping to get away then for some short um, breaks. And so I haven't got a lot of holiday photos to post for you. We did stay last, last year, just when COVID hit, just before Easter, we were going to go to a lovely place in the south of Western Australia called Quinn and Up. And we had it all booked. And then just before Easter, we were all, uh, we weren't really in a lockdown here like other parts of the world have been, but we weren't allowed to leave our region. So we could basically only stay in the metropolitan area. So we rang up the caravan park we'd booked into and they very thankfully gave us a credit. So as soon as the borders were lifted, we did head back, head down there. And it was the most beautiful location. It was the middle of winter, so it was nice and cold. Oh, when I say cold, I'm talking like 16, 17 degrees. <laughs> That's cold for Western Australia. And I was able to wear some of my winter knits, which was really nice. But the best thing about this caravan park was we had the whole place to ourselves. A lot of people don't like to go down into the south of the country during winter because they don't like the cold. We love the cold. Um, and there were kangaroos everywhere. And they were so tame and so friendly. There was one old kangaroo that almost used to tap at our door in the morning because um, John looked up what you can feed them and you can feed them oats. So uh, all my breakfast porridge oats were getting fed to the kangaroos and they were there waiting for him every morning, which was just lovely. So I'll try and find a few photos from that and put up at the end of this. And like I said, please, please think about Andrew and Andrea and what they're going through at the moment. Us, people in the knitting world just love and adore them so much so anything that I can do to help I'm sure they will greatly appreciate it and I just wish I could do more I wish I could wave a magic wand for them but I can't so this is just a little something I thought I could do to try and help them out and relieve a little bit of that financial pressure so please feel free to donate you will need to have a PayPal account first then once you've done that, you just um, put in the link that I've put on the screen here and you'll be able to, you don't have to send me any money, you just can donate directly to them. So, yeah, please think about them and think about making a small donation and I shall see you in a week with the progress from my first week. So, see you all for now. See you later. Bye.